We're here with who? Uh, Aaron. And what did you do today, Aaron? Um, I went X1 in Swiss, actually ended nine and zero day one of Swiss. I was the number one seed. And then after all rounds of Swiss, I was number three going in the top 32. You were the only Voices voice player in Top Cut. I was, I was the only one in the top 32. What kind of decks you played? Um, well, Snake Eye. We did uh, round one was just kind of a throwaway. It was a guy, he just kind of brought a joke deck just because uh, he's just going to go off and play different events. And then we did Chimera, Snake Eye, Snake Eye, Tempi. And then Snake Eye, Snake Eye, Cash, and then just Snake Eyes. So it was seven Snake Eyes in total. Seven Snake Eyes? Yeah, we, just, lost, we yeah. lost to one Snake Eye. <laughs> Can I see your shirt? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Intimidator. <laughs> and then we got the hat, too. Uh, there you go. Got it. All right, so let, let's see the deck profile. How many cards is it? Uh, this is 45. This part's pretty much stock and standard. Everybody knows this. You know, you know your three lows. The main one card combo starter facilitates everything. Card's completely broken. And then you got three divider and a trias hierarchia. Same thing. This right here gets you to low. This also breaks boards. This is how you beat stun. Like card is just amazing. It always will pretty much bail you out of a bad spot. And then we've got the triple Sephira. Same thing, mandatory three because it searches any of your ritual monsters. It's going to put a ritual spell in the graveyard and it also lets you get them out of the graveyard. So it actually helps you with your grind game and recycling too. Two of the main guys, Skull Guardian, best Omni Negate in the game right now, 4,100. Can't target it once you get set up and just, yeah, negate and pop anything. Double Cerevis. Uh, this is partly why I wrecked all of the Snake Eye matchups because this card pretty much can solo a Snake Eye trying to play into it. Targeting protection because uh, very hand trap heavy format. It'll protect you, let your plays go through, and it's just a great card. We do the one Audaz Pendulum Graph Dragon. Because the inboard that I'm currently aiming for passes on this and Skull Guardian because of the Tempi situation. This is very, very helpful. And then uh, it's also good against Snake Eye. You pretty much just hold this for OG against Snake Eye. And how, it's, it's a big choke. So, and how is this card? Because some decks don't play this card. Uh, a lot of people actually. They'll, uh, what I've seen mostly is they put it in the side, um, but we're on the 45. I like it in the main because if I'm doing a blind duel game one and I go first, I'm always passing on this card. Because it's awesome, because it also lets you summon the autos from the deck which can help trigger, you know, like your blessing, for example, like your spell card, too. So it just it's just positive. And it searches a ritual spell, too. If you've got two ritual spells in Graveyard, you can end phase, grab one, add it back to your hand. And did, that, did you use that during the, the tournament? That part actually never came up today, but it came up, it's come up many a times in testing, but not actually during this tournament. The Cerevis, he's what lets you recycle your ritual spells back into the game. If they end up popping your blessing, which is your main grind game, you can use this to put the blessing back into the deck, so that way you can just go right back to it. I actually beat a Snake Eye player today because when I summon this, he goes, Princess, target, target. I was like, okay, chain, return the hand. And he looks at me and he says, oh, that returns the hand for cost. I'm like, yes, sir, it does. <laughs> so super, super good. We've got just kind of the, the spells and traps. This one's another one everybody knows. You run three barrier. Opening this up is amazing. Targeting protection is absolutely insane. And a lot of people will just sit there and kind of forget that it has the battle protection to where you have to swing into the rituals. Uh, card is just absolutely just awesome. And a free search of any voiceless card. Like, not just monsters, any voiceless card. And then we've got the, the Blessing I was just referencing. This card is absolutely busted. It's a shame that you have to run it as a one-up because it is a brick if you draw it uh, more times than not. But this card is insane because it will allow you to ritual summon on your opponent's turn to say, like, put when you use Cerevis, return it to hand, you can just use this and put it right back on the board. And I won a duel earlier with this card because the opponent, uh, he did not realize that this provides battle protection to the card that you ritual summon. So what he did was he went Flameberg, tried to attack over my Cerevis, and I was like, yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> it can't be destroyed by battle. Pot of Prosperity, Pot of Prosperity, Pot of Prosperity. Most lists run two of this, but where we go to 45, you can comfortably run three. I did not play a single game the entire tournament where I drew two of these. I only ever saw one in the hand, which is exactly what you want to have happen. And it's just a great consistency card, especially post-side. And then we've got the three pre-prep, which is the most broken card in this entire deck. It is quite literally just a plus one. More times than not, people would actually just ash your pot of prosperity, and then you would just be like, feels bad. <laughs> Pre-prep, I'm going plus one now. <laughs> now, here's a question. Some people have decided to run two of these and two of the prosperities, but this is 45. Do you feel like uh, three at each is mandatory? Yeah, so before I actually had this build at 41 cards, and I was running two and two, and then when I was running the numbers, because I was like, I just didn't feel like I had enough non engine and enough coverage, and I was like, if I go to 45 and put two extra, two extra cards of coverage, 
I can actually up these up to three and it made my deck actually more consistent than the 41 build because of the fact I was able to add four cards in total and two of them were consistency cards. Like the statistics on the deck with this list right now is you should open two engine, two non-engine, and then the fifth card should be another piece of engine with like a 10% chance higher or so chance of being another piece of engine, which is what you want to see typically. Two, two non-engine, three engine. Two of the ritual spell, you have to run two. Uh, it kind of sucks at times, but another benefit of the 45 list, you almost never see this in your opening hand because there's many cards in this deck you just don't want to draw, like Blessings, this, the Trap card. So going 45 just reduces that. Also reduces those awkward hands where you open like this, Pre-Prep, and Sephira. So you literally can't even use both of them, which really sucks. <laughs> we have Instant Fusion, and then we've got Call by the Grave. How was Instant Fusion? Instant Fusion won me, I want to say, three of my rounds, probably. Because I went against a Snake Eye player earlier, and I went Instant Fusion, Millennium Eyes. And then this guy actually went Princess, targeted. I was like, okay, chain it. I'm equipping your Princess now, and it's negated. And I'd actually nibbed him on the previous turn. So then I was like, Link, SP, target your Flame Bird. Checked his whole board. He had IP. He can't even activate it. It was just, he was toast. Instant Fusion just stole the board. <laughs> and then Call by is just busted. Where it's a hand trap heavy format, we have these plus the uh, the Triads and the two Cerevis for hand trap protection. So like if I open with Call by, we'll put, uh, we'll put like Mud Dragon on the field, for example, for targeting protection. So you just cover all your bases and play. Because so, that's, now, you can't win unless you can set up a board, and we, we built the deck to make sure we could set up a board as much as possible. And then the last one here, we just have the Radiance Trap, the card that I love to draw all the time in testing. Uh, I draw this card in testing pretty much like 50%, but I actually only drew it one time today, and it was going second, and I still won that duel, so it felt real good. <laughs> it was a nice change of pace. Now, from here, we're going to go to some non-engine. We've got Triple Ash. Uh, my opinion, second best hand trap in the format. Uh, some people will say it's the best. I think this is, you know, technically it's not mandatory, but you might as well say it is mandatory because it covers quite literally every matchup in existence. And even though Snake Eye is very resilient, there are times where they just open like Bonfire, you ash it, and they pass, you know, because they draw too much non on it. Triple Imperm. Now, this one, in my opinion, is the best hand trap in the format. Uh, can't go wrong with Imperm. Doesn't play in the talents. It also covers every single matchup. If you ash a uh, Snake Eye Ash, there's a lot of times where they have to pass on that. We've got the Nibiru. Uh, this is one that I argued with multiple people on because they were telling me not to run the Nibiru. And How was it? It was pretty great. I turn skipped three or four Snake Eye players today because I would open this plus like Imperm. And they would go all the way into the Apollosa line, the whole works. I would just sit back and let them. And then I'd be like, Nibiru. And they go Apo and we go Imperm. And then they, they pass on a token at that point. Because everybody was acting like this wasn't the, the card to run because of Tenpa. And it just every time I'm like, but you forget that Snake Eye is still the best deck in the room. And like that should be your priority for your tech. And this is an easy side out in Tenpa anyway. And uh, if Tenpa actually goes wide going first in like game one, uh, if they choose to, well not game one, like game two, if you keep nib in, like you can actually nib Tenpa if they try to do their full wide war, they do like Zulkan line and all that. Mm. Uh, and you can sack off some of it. Because especially where they open up Fenrir, too. Because most of them main Fenrir. And then we got Double Valor. Very, 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 very good hand trap. Same application as Imperm, but a little bit worse. Because it's only in your opponent's main phase. And it also makes you run face first in the talents. Which kind of sucks. But I think if you're running non-engine, you have to have this card in your, uh, in your deck. We got two Ghost Ogre. I actually felt really good today. I don't think it's worthy of having three in the main. And if you don't actually are able to run more than 12 non-engine, don't even run this in the main. Put it in the side if you really feel like it. It's not very good against Snake Eye. It's okay against Tempa. Like, if they're smart, they will easily play around it unless they have to use the field spell to play. But I actually caught a couple of uh, Snake Eye players with this. Uh, one went into the Slain line. As soon as he activated Slain, I popped that. And so he just went, like, neg four. <laughs> so he committed three materials and didn't get his uh, card out of the grave. And then there's a fun interaction, too, if they're trying to OTK you with World Sea. When they go battle phase, they go, declare World Sea. You go, chain ogre. Now it's not co-linked anymore. You go, you get zero pops. You literally can't OTK me now. You just committed all your resources for nothing. And then we have a uh, Bestial Magma. Uh, it's decent bond going first because, you know, Snake Eye players are always trying to do a little greedy play where they grab their, you know, IP out of the graveyard. And then this lets you search Saphira during the end phase. So it's also a consistency card on top of that. 
Okay. How many hand traps do you play in total? Uh, this is 14 hand traps plus the instant fusion and the call by. So it's uh, 16 non engine total. Extra deck, um, I don't really feel like there's a right or a wrong answer for this because the deck, like, I went into the extra deck half of my duels, I want to say. So it's not not really all that necessary. Like, just. Good utility? Good utility. You just pack in the good utility, whatever is going to work best for you, uh, whether it's your local scenes or whatever you think is going to be the best deck in the format. So we just kind of, like, for starters, we've got Underworld Goddess uh, because Pearly is still a thing. There are decks that uh, will do, like, uh, Chimera will do a Light and Dark Chaos Angel, which I literally cannot deal with unless I do this. Like, I'm just kind of out of luck unless I go, like, set in and wait a whole turn for it to come back to me. So, okay, it's just a good card. I never summoned it, but uh, I'd rather have it and not need it than to need it and not have it, basically. Double Battle Mondo. I do think this is the closest to mandatory that you'll see in the extra deck. I do think you should always have two of these uh, because it is so good in the grind game. It's so much utility. There's times where I've actually went into this with, like, IP Masquerina on my opponent's turn and then basically shuffle an extra Ritual in the Grave Bounce and then activate it on their turn, bring back the Ritual I just used for the material for it, and, like, put my Skull Guardian right back on the board. Uh, this card won me multiple games today. SP, obviously, uh, if you have an extra deck, this is probably going to be in it. SP is amazing. Uh, helps you break boards because the deck does kind of struggle with removal at times. It's amazing for that. And then we combine it with the IP Masquerina. And uh, in fact, the, the last round I played when I, uh, I smoked the guy game one because we actually passed on this plus, uh, plus the pendulum graph is how I passed. So we just started turn and we brought back our Skull Guardian, our low, and then we had trap, everything set up, plus an IP Masquerina. And then he was just like, he scooped instantly. He's like, well, we'll go ahead and go next. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's fair. And then we've got Lina. Uh, I never saw the mirror match, but it is a thing. Everybody runs Valor, and you can very easily just grab Valor out of the graveyard for this. Um, so it's just it's just a handy card. I never summoned it today, but again, like you know, Goddess, I'd rather have it, and not need it, than to need it and not have it. And then we've got the Almirah Shakir Garden line. I put this in here. I actually also did not use this once today. I never once went through the line because I mean, I'll be honest, I kind of drew crack the entire tournament and <clears throat> never found the need to actually do this, but. This allows you to set up a board and play around an uh, Ash Blossom. Like, you can set up your whole board and not have to worry about an Ash. Uh, which is nice if you open Cerevis in your hand, plus, uh, you know, like low. You can just actually set up a board this way. Anima. Um, this is a part of why Nibiru is really, really good, aside from the fact you can use it as a ritual material in this. So you just, you nib them, you put the token in the Anima zone, and you say, ha-ha, that's mine. And it just, it's really helpful. And it's just, you know, good link one to make an SP. You just Because uh, you can turn Millennium Eyes Restrict also in the Anima. Because I beat a guy earlier doing that. I turned it into it and then took his token from him. And then, then linked off from there. And then for here, we've got a Synchro Package. We've got Chaos Angel. We have Otto's Meteor Burst. And we've got Herald of the Arclight. Chaos Angel, surprisingly, I didn't use it today. Because in testing, like, it comes up a lot. Um... Because there's a lot of duels where people will oddly let you get trias and low on the board and then not do anything, and then you can just go into this. And a lot of times they don't have an answer for that because he'll be unaffected by monster effects, and uh, and then he's going to get to banish something, which is nice. This is a target for Pendulum Graph. This is what makes Pendulum Graph basically just FTK Kenpai because if you go Pendulum Graph and then on res you summon this out, not only can this trigger your blessings and give you a free level 7 if you're not in Tempai, but if you're against Tempai, you just slap it on the board, sit on your Skull Guardian. There's nothing they can do. Like, that's it. Because you just hold that on the negate to keep this alive at that point. And then last, we've got Fusions. Uh, another Diviner target. And then these are my two Instant Fusion targets. Uh, I cannot stress enough, if you're watching this and you're a Voiceless player, put Instant Fusion in your deck and put these two cards in your deck. I promise your win rate is going to increase. That so card carries. How is this for Snake Eyes against uh, <clears throat> Prom Princess? Uh, if you're going second, game one, yeah. You could just start off your turn by just going instant fusion, and this actually checks about half of their board because now they can't go IP into SP. It does nothing. And then they cannot princess your monsters either. So it will check a good chunk of the snake eye board. And then this plus anything equals SP with a on summon vanish, which is so nice. And then if you're going first, all you got to do is like, say you open with Cerevis in your hand. Well, you don't need targeting protection. You need ash protection to summon this. Same thing, vice versa. If you open Call By or if you can play through Ash, you just summon this, give yourself targeting protection. And then 
you'll find that most times they'll just sit on their hand traps. They just, they can't even interrupt you at all, and you play for free. But yeah, definitely instant fusion. Instant fusion was the MVP of this tournament for sure. Now for the side deck, I feel like most of this is pretty basic, but uh, we just try to cover the wide range of plays. I know both Book of Eclipse and Droplet are like the two most common choices that people are going for um, when they're going second. So we went with the spiciness of the, we put in the three Solemn Judgments. Round two of the tournament against uh, Chimera, he, uh, he opened up, I forgot what, what spell he used, um, but then he chained to it and then he, uh, he went Droplet and sacked off. He sent, uh, he sent three cards and not one of them were a trap. I just flipped this and I was just like, you wanna go game two? <laughs> I was like, you lose, dude. <laughs> You just sacked half your hand and it didn't resolve. Uh, so three solemns, uh, it's just it's awesome. Uh, it never come up in terms of time. I didn't go to time a single a single round in the in the tournament. Like DD Crow. Uh, uh, most people are on bestials, which I think is just completely incorrect. Uh, this serves the same function but better. I mean, because do you really care about that body on the board in this type of format to where every top meta deck can easily spam out like ten bodies on the board and uh, this absolutely destroys the mirror match if you go against another voiceless player. If your uh, opponent, for example, I can actually just show you here. Uh, let's say you go normal summon diviner, and then you go the diviner effect, you send Trias Hierarchia to the graveyard. And then if your voiceless opponent then goes tribute for cost for Trias, you go chain crow, banish diviner from the graveyard. So on res, it's no longer that card that was tributed, which means it does not activate, and you just turn skip them. And then alternatively, if they open their turn, because the way I always play is I start with this, and I'll send it, and before I even commit a monster to the board, I will use it. And you can also just crow it. As soon as they start their turn, they go, Sapir, just get it out there before they even have a chance to use it. So, like, crow, crow is the... And also, if you top deck this for turn against Snake Eye, you can literally just, goodbye, princess. Let's just go ahead and get that nonsense out here. <laughs> which, is, uh, which is really good. Uh... From here, all we've got left over is spells. I think this one right here is pretty generic. Uh, everybody and their mother's on deck lockdown and skill drain, so I kind of think this is mandatory. Uh, there's runic. Uh, actually, runic stun went completely undefeated after uh, all rounds of Swiss. And you know, you got to have something like that. It's a real threat. Plus, everybody runs floodgates, so you, you got to have you got to have cosmic. Uh, it's also good in the mirror match too. You can just pop their back row. Then we got droplet. I think Droplet is the second best board breaker in the game right now behind Talent, but my concern is my weakest matchup, which is Branded. This right here will stop the Puppet Lock. Uh, among many other things, it really helps with the Snake Eye inboard because they like to pass on IP and Apo, and that will just check that completely. So, yeah. Everybody, everybody knows Droplet's good. And then last, for my Floodgate of choice, we went with Triple Necro Valley. How was this throughout the tournament? The last round of Swiss, I won because of Necro Valley. Uh, he hand trapped me into oblivion and I was in a game state where I was sitting on nothing more than a barrier and I put Necro Valley on the board and he's snake eye like everybody else he could not play through it he could not establish a board passes back to me he hand traps me again and we went back and forth like this for like five turns of him just unable to establish a board because of Necro Valley and I had cosmic in my hand the entire time so finally when I got buried to resolve I was just like we're gonna go ahead and just cosmic that off the board I'm going to play now <laughs> And then we just set up board and then got game. That was actually game three of my last round of Swiss. Like, that was the only reason I won, because this gave me, like, a couple turns of breathing room. And uh, it's not as negative against you as, uh, like, deck lockdown is, because you can still use your trap effect to get, like, Serevis on board and stuff. You just can't. You cannot use Prayer at all. But they're going to out this before they actually try to out your board anyway. Any yeah. thoughts you want to go? Uh, well, yeah, shout out to Lou's. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome uh, shout out to uh, TriCard Games uh, Tom, great people uh, yeah, just good times it was a great, great experience, had a lot of fun well congratulations yeah, thank you man, uh, dueling for Dale do it for Dale, raise hell, praise Dale <laughs>